Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Are you ready? Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Rabino. And this DJ Erm in the building. And you listen to the Up and Up podcast. Yeah. Wait. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What it do, what it do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned into the Up and Up podcast. I'm your host, Rabino. You know, I'm DJ Erm, man. What's up, dog? What it do? You good? Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah, Feeling yeah I'm great. Good, I'm good, bro. Yes, sir, man. What about you? I'm good, man. I'm blessed, bro. Blessed, highly favored, right? Wow. That's how it is, man. You ready for that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you know? for that, yeah. Come on, man. Um, but yeah, for those of you first time list, uh, tuning in, uh, this is the Up and Up podcast. This is the podcast where we're focused on cultivating culture, right? Uh, nothing more, nothing less, right? We're, we're yeah. here to provide a space for individuals, groups, movements um, who are out here carving lanes, right? Yep. Cultivating culture, you know, occupying spaces that need representation, all that, right? Mm-hmm. Chasing their dreams, dream chasers. Shout out Meek. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Facts. All that, man, all that. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in if this is your first time. Also, for the consistent listeners, viewers, supporters um, of the podcast, the platform, the movement, thank you guys again for the encouragement, the continuous support, right? You got to shout them out. Yep. Got to shout them out. And also, yeah, not just for us, you know, the support you're giving to these guests that come up on this show, um, you know, stay connected, right? Reach mm-hmm. out to them, you know, after mm-hmm. the after the episode doesn't end there, right? Yeah. Reach out to them. These yeah, people yeah. are really accessible, especially if you live in the city, mm-hmm. right? Um, now, getting that out the way, if you want to continue supporting the podcast, you know what to do. You can find all the episodes on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes, and Spotify, right? Just yeah. typing up in a podcast. I'll that's where for, you can find it. I'll be forgetting about that. I know, right? Yeah, How, what platforms dope. are we not on now at this point? Yeah, right? Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a new platform, TikTok. You heard of that? Yep. Yeah, we got to get on that. Bro, yeah. Yeah. The homie was telling me about that. We got to get on that now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, just typing up in a podcast. That's where you can find it for all episodes. Also, please, if you're not already, follow us on all social media platforms at underscore the up and up to stay connected. We got a lot, a lot coming. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. a lot coming in a little time, right? Because yeah, the year's yeah. almost over. We're we trying do. to yeah, trying to yeah. squeeze some things in, right? So just Curse stay time. stay tuned. Go follow us right now, right? Um, outside of that, anything else? Any any announcements? Nah, right? You're not yeah. holding on to nothing. Nah. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Um, so again, for the first time listeners, just to kind of give you some context, this is the show where we pull the curtain back, right? Uh, provide context to the success of those who are grinding and going after it, right? Success isn't overnight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think we live in an era where that is what most people think, or at least that's what we're exposed yeah. to. So it's, it's always good to get the context to, to how it happens, right? Yep. Um, I would say today's guest is a young brother who's, who's taking uh, this thing we call life and turning it into his own canvas, right? Um, and painting his own narrative and carving his own line with that canvas, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bars, <laughs> right? Come on, man. Come on. Um, I would yeah. say just from obviously knowing the brother for some time now, um, he's definitely an ambitious culture cultivator who's keeping everything he's doing on the up and up, right? Obviously, otherwise, a brother wouldn't be with us tonight. Um, to give you some insight on the work the brother's putting forth, uh, he's an amazing artist and painter out of the city of Seattle. Uh, but furthermore, he's also representative of the powerful collective of creatives known as the Fundamental Family. Mm-hmm. Right? I think of him as like the Wu Tang Clan of the painters. Right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wu- yeah, man. man. That's how, so just, sure. just picture that, right? Picture the Wu Tang Clan, but everybody got canvases and paintbrushes, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, but just to give you some insight on the Fundamental Family, it's actually a really dope collective of creatives with the mission to change how we view art um, while also staying true to the craft, right? Um, and it consists of 10 artists, creatives, product makers, business owners um, who are majority black and brown, brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. right? Um, that create everything from art, showcases, community work throughout the uh, cities of Seattle and Tacoma. So uh, shout out to them. And let's just get straight to him, man, right? Yeah. Right. I'm ready to meet this yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. Ready to Me introduce too, y'all man. to this brother, right? Yeah. Our guest is none other than Mr. Fundamental himself, Lester Pearson. Can we get a round of applause, man? Hey. My brother. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Yeah. Finally. How y'all brothers doing, man? Yeah, man. We appreciate yeah, man. the invite yeah. and the opportunity to be here. Thank Hell y'all. Yeah, man. Finally. Yeah, man. I like that, right? Yeah. This is day one supporter real. right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming to the show. Um, mm. Again, uh, it's a you know, pleasure to have you. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. Um, you already know how the show starts. We started off with the quote of the day, right? Let's hear it. Um, get the Let's get, hear it. get the mood right. So quote yeah. man, quote man, yeah. cross the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got for us today, man? All right, man. So the quote of the day today is: Some painters transform the sun into a yellow spot. Mm. Others transform a yellow spot into the sun. Mm. Mm. Whew. 
I see what you did there too. I know. Oh, Come man. on, man. Yeah, Yo, somebody already got quote man. He need, he need to get a t-shirt, the man. Or something. Yo, <laughs> hey, dope. run that back, dog. That was dope. All right, man. So the quote is: Some painters transform the sun into a yellow spot. Others transform a yellow spot into the sun. Mm. Can do anything with that paint, man. Come on, man. Yeah, that's that's the power of the mind, right there. Yeah, that's facts. what that's speaking to. Uh, who so, said who said that quote? Picasso. Okay. Picasso. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was waiting to say that. <laughs> I can't wait. He was like, "You ain't gonna ask me to set the quote." <laughs> I really was waiting though. <laughs> nah, that's what's up though. That's what's up. Shout out Pablo Picasso, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, you kind of get it. We bring in the quotes because it starts the conversation off, right? Mm-hmm. But it also um, aligns with our guests and what they're what they're putting forth, right? Right. Um, so before we kind of get into your story, right, which we will, um, I do also want to give you a chance to kind of give some um, insight to those who don't know or who are not familiar with the fundamental family. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of what is your guys' mission and aim? I kind of touched on it, but from mm-hmm. your point of view, what, what are you guys really trying to accomplish with that? Definitely, man. Um, so the fundamental family, we are... Um, a group of men and women, black and brown. We create art. We talk art. We do art showcases. Um, we try to be as involved as we can with the community mm-hmm. um, in the Seattle Tacoma mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. Um, starting in Seattle, and then we're going to branch over to to the Tacoma area. Mm-hmm. In the group, we have Tacoma um, individuals from Tacoma. Okay. Um, and we we definitely want to tap in with with the Tacoma area a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but right now, we're just you know we're focusing on the Seattle area, yeah, trying yeah. to branch off. You know, starting with the CD. Yeah. Um, it's a place where I was, I guess, raised. Mm-hmm. But I lived in the C- uh, what um, South Park area. Okay. You know, but I went to school in the CD. Yeah. Madrona. Leshy, mm-hmm. Franklin is on the border yeah, of the CD yeah. South mm-hmm. End. So, uh, well, you know, I was thinking, like, let's start there. Our venue spaces at Coyote Central. Mm-hmm. You know, the next show that we're having upcoming is um, going to be in Rainier in the okay. City area. Okay. So, in the South End. Keeping it local. You for know, sure. keeping it local for yeah. sure. You know, we want to, you know, inspire as many people as we can as we, as we go and, and also um, successfully sell our products and, mm-hmm. and, and at least just inspire people yeah. to, to see what we're doing. Yeah. For sure. That's dope, man. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you did touch on it a little bit um about like where you grew up where you went to school but uh what was it like growing up like your upbringing you know if you could uh dive into that a little bit more yeah yeah no problem um so i am a a child three i got three siblings uh, three other siblings in my family my older brother is 10 years older than me um and then i have a um an older sister who is one year older than me and I have a younger sister who is two years younger than me. Mm. Um, my brother was like in and out of the house because he was doing his thing. Mm. Um, and then I mainly grew up around my two sisters, you know. So mm. wherever older sister went, yeah. I had to go. Yeah. And then my younger sister usually followed. Gotcha. But she was a young rebel. She like <laughs> she went to Mini instead of Madrona, like you know mm. me and my older sister <laughs> did. But I literally went to all the schools that my older sister went to. Gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. Um, and I was. Um, very, very, um, you know, vibrant, you know, charismatic young child, you know, at a certain age. Mm-hmm. And then when I got to ooh, elementary school, that was probably like around the eight or nine <clears throat> age, mm-hmm. I, I broke out with eczema and it just went all over my body oh, and my yeah. face. And it just really, really like made me, can we curse on here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah, made me hella yeah. insecure. Yeah. You know, it made me hella insecure. So um, I was always like, I got really shy, really yeah. insecure, and I didn't want to, like, you know, talk to a lot of people. You mm-hmm. know, I had, like, a set group of friends, but it didn't want to let me branch out and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you know, I was uh, uh, insecure about my weight, you know, because I started gaining more weight. Mm. Um, you know, I was insecure about my, my skin complexion. Yeah. You know, because I was a dark brother, you know, and I had these spots all on my face, and I was like, man, I don't... I don't want to be in this skin right now, mm, yeah. you know. Mm. Um, also, going to middle school, with, you know, w- once that transition happened, middle school is a tough age, you know, because there's so much emotions going on and you're, you know, and so many different changes that you don't know. Mm-hmm. And at times I was like, man, I don't even want to be, you know, uh, you know, this dark skin brother like mm-hmm. that because I saw all the light skin kids, you know, yeah. get, in, get in the girls. That's when we had little Romeo, little yeah, Bow yeah, Wow. Yeah, yeah. And a girl, I was like, why do all the girls keep on going that <laughs> yeah. way? I'm like, damn. Yeah. Um, you know, but as I got older, like especially going into high school, transitioning, you know, I was, uh, you know, started to to, to feel my body out, you know, gotcha. like get slender, you know, got the cool car, you yeah. know, and then you know, ladies started coming my way. I was like, okay, well, I, I guess that's like kind of like validation, but mm. you know, it, you know, 
my bringing, you know, like this is just talking about my character, yeah, my yeah, personality yeah. and whatnot, yeah. you know. I became more, you know, confident in myself. And I became, you know, more outgoing, like talking to people like, okay, yeah. cool. Like, yeah. and, and yeah, that's like part of the, you know, that's like part of my upbringing as, yeah. as a child, you know, but I like, you know, have two parents in the household, which most kids, you know, in the Seattle community don't yeah. like my closest friends, parents were divorced, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it was like, it really meant a lot, you know, yeah. not everything mm -hmm. that like my pops or moms did was right, you mm -hmm. know, but they were there, you know, yeah. they supported us. You yeah. Know, it's a symbol. Kids. It's a symbol. I yeah. think, I think, uh, I definitely look at like those who do who do have the fortune to have both parents in the house. Right. So it's a very it's a it's a huge privilege, man. Right. Like, mm. Right. And I think I think people don't acknowledge that enough, you mm. know, even within ourselves, you know, like you got to you got to look at that and understand like yo that is a privilege, right? Right. Um right. Now I do also want to get into um kind of like your early interest in terms of the creative mind, like yeah. how that sparked, right? Mm -hmm. Um like, what was that first, I guess, creative expression? Like, obviously, you may have been doing it, but, like, what right. was that moment when it was, like, evident that, like, okay, I'm good at this, and maybe I can com commit to this even long term? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, I would say in classes, I would just doodle. Doodle, just, like, draw, like, you know, because for me, like, it's it gets boring at times, and it gets, like, repetitive just hearing a teacher just talk at you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I was kind of like a more one on one person, like, you know, you show me how to do this and I'll do it like, mm -hmm. you know, more like a hands hands on type of person, yeah. you know. So when you're talking to a huge class of people like and I'm just one student, I'm just like, OK, I'm just going to go draw and just weed it out, weed yeah. out what you're saying. Yeah. You know, and I, I see that since I work in the school now, I see a lot of kids do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I also was in a daycare and a daycare provider provider was really good, like artistically. And she tried to teach me some of these skills as like, a, you know, as an artist and, you know, get my doodling to actually becoming like drawings and, and things mm -hmm. like that. But because I was young and I was into the sports, I was into just hooping with my friends mm -hmm. and wanted to get out and just play. I just like was like kicking that to the curb. Yeah. So when I was young, I kind of like just it, art was here. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, get off of me. Get yeah. off of me. Yeah. I'm going I'm to go play. I'm going to go do something yeah. else. I'm going to go play sports. It wasn't like the most convenient thing at the time. Right, yeah. right. I just, didn't, I just didn't know that this is what, you know, the universe is telling me. Like, hey, mm. man, you're you're a visual artist. Like, yeah. you can yeah. do this, you know. Um, then when I got to uh, my high school uh, at Franklin, I took a, a drawing class with Mr. Dunkley. And, you know, I liked it because when you walked in, he just set the whole mood different. He had the lights off, but with the windows, uh, uh, like the curtains up on the mm -hmm. windows. So mm -hmm. that's like ambient light. Mm -hmm. So it just created a whole like, like real chill mood. And I was like, oh, I think this is dope. And then I, we, he just gave us different projects to, to start working on. I was like, okay, this is cool. And then when I got to college, yeah. you know, I um, took took a course, another drawing course, and I, and I really enjoyed like how my professor was just like, because he was so, you know, well sought after, like people, all the people wanted to be in his class. Mm -hmm. He was like, I want you to do your autograph, like your initials, mm -hmm. your autograph, and just keep doing it. And we had like a, a stick and like ink, and we just had to keep on drawing, mm -hmm. keep on drawing. And basically, he didn't tell us, but he was basically wondering, like, who's going to say, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. then he's like, okay, if you want to question me, you don't belong here. Mm. You know, so, you know, we just kept on doing it, kept on doing it. And I was, like, definitely on the waiting list for my college to get in. Mm -hmm. And some kids got that were in the class got kicked out because they were like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. Yeah. You know, but I just kept doing what he was saying. Mm -hmm. You know, basically showing that you're coachable, that you can, you know, uh, um, listen to his directions. And he doesn't have to keep on working with the student that's gotcha. rebellious. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Um, but I would say, you know, to, to summarize all that, as a youngin. I really was not trying to pursue the creative abilities, mm -hmm. but as I got older, I started to embrace it. Yeah. I started to love it. Yeah. Now it's my passion. Yeah. My therapy. Yeah. It's my love. Yeah. It's work. It's my career. It's everything, man. You know, it's everything yeah. now. You know, like I, was, I showed you last time we was talking. Like on my phone, I pop up. It's like a little calendar, like reminder that says, <laughs> "You should be painting, my nigga." Like at nine o'clock. <laughs> word for word, too. It doesn't say. You that. should be painting, like you know, just to remind me because I like. I would say, like, I'm an organized person at times, you know, but, like, one thing that keeps me going is, like, to make sure, like, hey, like, get your painting done. Like, yeah. you know, at least at least tap into that because that's your therapy. And, like, so, yeah. you know, working a nine-to-five, when I go home, I commute home, I meditate before I paint, yeah. and I just get on it. You know, it mm -hmm. helps me clear my space when I meditate with, 
with the lights out, turn on a little light, uh, a little colorful light, and then put on some music that mm. is like mm -hmm. really has my mind like reflecting on what I did yeah. the whole day. It's a process. And then I hop onto the painting and then just, you know, start creating like, you know, these these uh personal masterpieces. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. Hell that yeah. That is dope. Yeah. These are dope too. Appreciate uh, it. Appreciate shout out it. these paintings over yeah, here. Man. Yeah. Thank I you. keep looking at that one. That one's clean. <laughs> and yeah. the DMP six. <laughs> yeah. I did a whole like shoe series uh in our first uh fundamental show at Coyote Central. Okay. And I did a whole bunch of different Jordan Jordan shoes with my fault. A whole bunch of different Jordan shoes that I was inspired by that I really enjoyed. Mm. You know, and it, it, what sparked my uh, uh, imagination to it was like I was reading a book. Um, I forgot the name of it. I, but the artist is Elizabeth Saddleback, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she just takes different pictures of like shoes. And like just, and it's a timeline of all the shoes that you know have come out. But she just doesn't takes the pictures like in so many like cool angles and yeah. it's just like super clear. Yeah. And I just like decided like, oh man, like what if I did paintings like that? And that's how I see like paintings now. Like I like things that are close up. Mm -hmm. And my process is is that I will take an image, I will put it in Photoshop, filter it, and then project it and then trace it. Mm. And then I'll mix the paint. So my, I'll say mm. my style is abstract gradient. Mm. You know, as you can see, like how it's supposed to be like the whole shoe, uh, DMP six is supposed to be all black, right? Yeah. But to showcase the shadows and highlights, you know, mm. I'm taking like white and black and adding yeah. it more and yeah. just adding those values to showcase Detail. the shadows and highlights yeah. on the shoe. You know, that's detail, man. No, nah, really. And, and yeah, man. it's interesting too because you're you're bringing us into your process at least right yeah. now, right? Yeah. And I'm glad you're doing that because there's a lot of artists out there aspiring artists creatives who constantly create and sometimes they don't get a chance to like let people know what goes into the work they do yeah right some like i don't know like i have per friends personally like whether it's you know some some close friends or even people like you that you know um are one of those painters who are really putting in the work and i get the context to it it's like i, I actually have a new appreciation for art you there know you go. um as opposed to just seeing something like oh that's dope yeah. you know like you you can't look at it the same as like a picture. Right. You know, I right. mean, they're both artistic, but it's like one was created from scratch, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? So, um, now I do want to get into, um, you obviously pursuing higher education, right? Mm -hmm. Um, going to college and, and then obviously graduating college and then kind of carving your lane after that. Mm -hmm. Um, but can you talk a little bit about how important college was for you, um, as a creative, but also as a black man in America? Because I think we, we, we've had conversations like this, mm -hmm. you know, in the past. So, but I, I talk about the importance of that and, like, what that moment may have done for you moving forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, as a creative, it helped me, like, because I found painting. Mm -hmm. And I never had before. Like, at, you know, Franklin, they just offer, like, I think one or two, you know, art courses. You know, it was drawing, it was sculpture, and that was it. You know, but when I got to the, – the school's called Bowdoin. Okay. And, uh, Bowdoin College, and it's in – Brunswick, Maine. I was three thousand miles away, all the way on the Brunswick, East Coast. Yeah, cold as hell. But like, Brunswick sounds hella cold. <laughs> it was. <bro. laughs> it was. Um, but I got to experience and try all these different mediums. You know, it was kind of like a test trial. Like I was trying architecture, sculpture, um, digital and film um, classes. Um, so just a whole bunch of different mediums and painting as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it really opened my eye to these different things. And the thing about college, like, I didn't even start out wanting to be, like, you know, do art. I wanted to do mechanical engineering. Mm. In my first two years, I did that. Like, I took the physics courses. I took the calculus, computer science. And it was hard as shit, especially coming from Franklin. <laughs> yeah. I was like, God damn. Like, because you're going from, you know, a public school yeah. all the way to a private school. And, like, personally, I feel that. The education system over there is way higher. Mm. Like, you know, they're doing chartering schools, like, for these yeah, kids, yeah. like, and they're just pipelining them straight yeah. into these, mm -hmm. you know, private schools. They're being, like, they're being funded. They're being resourced. You right. Know? Essentially, yeah. the school I went to was, like, an Ivy League school. They have this tradition that's called Ivies, where they basically, back in the day, they were, like, the Ivy League district or whatever, the committee mm -hmm. was, like, we want to invite you into the Ivy League mm. committee. And they yeah. were, like, nah, we're good. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to be a private liberal arts school. Yeah. Wow. So now they oh, have a shit. celebration. So, like, how you guys do at Wazoo, yeah. like, your senior or yeah. spring concert or whatever? Yeah. yeah, Like, that's our spring concert. It's, like, it's called Ivy's. So for a week long, 
These motherfuckers be partying and they, like, <laughs> they be like, okay, They're celebrating so like, that like independence. In the yeah, sense. so it's like you know wow. the teacher be teaching right. They be in their class drinking, doing this crazy like bets and dares and stuff like that. It's it's wild. <laughs> you just be, see people on campus walking just faded. Like that's dope. And then on Friday hey. they do like a, 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 a apartment party. Okay. And then Saturday they do the concert. They bring different people in. God so damn. I got to see like Mac Miller, Janelle Monae. Like when they first started yeah, out, so it was yeah. it was a cool process, you know. I didn't even know that though. That's crazy. that's yeah. that's like that's yeah. that's just dope because it's they're like they're it's liberal, different. They're a it's liberal different. art school. Yeah, like, art's about being an individual. Right, right. And in that moment, they're like, "Now nah, we cool. We gonna yeah. do us." Like, yeah. you know, that's yeah. that's exactly. dope. That's dope. Exactly. Yeah, that's 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 hella funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just picturing being a teacher and everybody's just sipping in your class. And you're right. just like, yeah, I know. Right? Do I even teach? Do I even teach? That? Yeah, they yeah. they still teach. They yeah. they the, the teachers know what's happening. They're like, okay, I got it. We're still going to teach your thing, you know. But you guys to have fun, do your thing. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's crazy. college was out there it was is different. It's definitely a culture shock, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but my dad prepared for me for that. Um, growing up, I love playing baseball. I was playing ever since I was seven. I started playing with the Negro Leagues and the CD, uh, primarily like all black people playing. Yeah. Um, then I went over to Rainier uh, League, still all black people playing. And then he switched. He took me out of there and took me to this league called Pac West, where it was all white players. And that that was just a culture shock because I was like, "What the hell? Why you got me way out here yeah, with all these white yeah, kids? Yeah. None of them are my friends, you know." So this is like an Iberian area, mm-hmm. and I was like, what? "Why is he doing this?" He was like, "I need to show you like that. This is what life is, man. Like you're gonna, you're not gonna always be around your homies and, and things like that. You're gonna not always be around like black people and brown mm-hmm. people." You're gonna be around some white people, and, mm-hmm. they, and these right now they're ruling the world right now. So you mm-hmm. need to see like how to move around around them and stuff like mm, that. Wow. So that experience right there, like, just opened up my eyes, you know. I was like, oh, okay. That's, that's some intentional shit right there. <laughs> yeah, right. That's so I thank my yeah. pops for that, like, yeah. like huge, like, heavy. Like, so when I went out to Bowdoin, like, it wasn't, like, just like, oh, man. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I know what it's like. That's interesting. You know. And yeah. so I went in there, and so for, like, being a black man going to college, like, they can't take that knowledge away from me. Mm. For real. Like, and so, you know. After I've been through college and, and just going through everything, I'm just like, yes, college is good. Like, it can, you know, for me when I graduated, it felt good to just be like, oh, I have graduated co- a high school. Mm-hmm. I got the diploma. Oh, it feels real good to cross off that box. Have you uh, completed college? Have you got your de- degree? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, it puts you in that society and life, you know, where you're like a step up than yeah. the person that has that like. hasn't, yeah. And in high school, you know. You could just check more boxes than the next exactly. person or whatever, yeah. Do you necessarily need it right now? Nah. Nah. You don't. Nah. There's so many business like, you know, that are yeah. starting. Like this right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, not many yeah. people need to have a college degree yeah. to do this. Nah, but you guys experienced a lot. Yeah. You guys got networks. That's yeah, what it's all yeah, about. Yeah. You got net- all type of networks that got you to here. Yeah. But, you know. You could teach this to somebody that's in high school or middle school, yeah, and they can come do this right now. Yeah, yeah. it's you know a, it's an experience too, you know? exactly. Because like you know, um, similar to your college experience, like I, you know, a lot of us went to Wazoo, it's a mm-hmm. PWI, you know, mm-hmm. so we're kind of like surrounded by that as well. Yeah, and it teaches you right. It teaches you how to move and navigate, and like you learn a lot about yourself through college, right? right. So I think right like independence. Yeah. yeah, like this this platform wouldn't even exist had had right. we all not went through our own individual experiences, but also collectively, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, that is true. There's a lot more that can be gained than just the b- ability to check off a box on mm-hmm. an application. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 That's dope. At the right. end of the day, hell, I'm trying to work for myself. Mm. Be entrepreneur, entrepreneur, mm-hmm. like own. That's all it's all about. Like that that game of Monopoly. Yeah. That really like reflects back to my mind. It's like, damn, just own this property and you could take money from people Straight, that you yeah. landed on your, you yeah. know, your square. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it's all about. It's that's why. I, that's the way I see <laughs> yeah. the, you know, the, the game of life mm-hmm. is, is 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 own own some property, yeah, own yeah. some land. Yeah. You know, one of my goals is to, you know, they got Chinatown. You know, but yeah. why, where's the where's the African American town yeah. or something like that where yeah. we have, you know black businesses all around you yeah. know and the value of the dollar don't last like yeah. what six hours oh, yeah. six hours or something like that yeah. there's like yeah. killer mike was talking about yeah. that yeah. you know it doesn't and circulate we, it doesn't yeah. circulate like but you know if uh, if an asian person or white person in their neighborhood it just lasts like what six uh, two three weeks yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. kind of like yeah. so it's like that really like 
has on my mind is like, yeah. man, like we need to get some property. Well, that's we need to thing. own something. You got to keep that conversation going, right? Yeah. Right? Because like it was, a, it was actually like a real common conversation at mm-hmm. at one point, you know, yeah. in Black history where it was, like, you got Black Wall Street, yeah, you know, and Tulsa and whatnot. It's like mm-hmm. that's it. That really happened. Like right. that really yeah. was created. So it's like. Even if we're not where we want to be, you still got to mm-hmm. talk about it. You got to speak it out there into existence. Right. You can't just like not talk about it and expect things to like be accepted. You know what I mean? Right. So we also got to put in the work too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you know? got to. And get the funds and, you and see invest. The thing but, is like, but you got to talk about it for sure. They ruined it because they yeah. were scared. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when we all stick together and we all got shit going on yeah. ourselves. Oh, we don't need what you got going on. We yeah. got our own thing. Yeah. They, they was like, nah, 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 we, yeah. we don't want to, let's go and burn it's like, this shit it's down. Like, bro, like, and I still need to read a book yeah. about that. And it's like, never too late to start, you mm-hmm. know? I think sometimes, you know, psychologically, we feel like we're so far behind when you yeah. see the Chinatowns. And you're, I was walking through Chinatown, like, last week or, so, or whatever, a couple weeks ago. I'm just, like, looking, I'm like, damn. They got all this, you know? And it's mm-hmm, like, yeah. but sometimes you can't let that distract you, you know? Right. Like, just just start. Do what you can mm-hmm. right now, you know? And we there's there's examples out here, man. There's people really doing it. So yeah. we got to put them at the forefront. Facts. Mm-hmm. You know? For sure. For real. So uh, I kind of want to jump into the fundamental family. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. How did uh, how what sparked that idea? Man, I would say it was like after I graduated college. You know, I was thinking that same idea is like, yo, man, like we need to own. I, like I want to own something. I mm-hmm. want to do something. And also, like a little background is my my dad like was entrepreneur. Like he owned his own painting business. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And so I could just see like from behind, you know, like okay, this is how a business runs. You can go to work, you know for yourself and, 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 and make whatever money you, that you, you know, you know, you want to and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, but for me, like I started to hone this, you know, passion for, you know, creating art. And I was like, yo, there's some, also some talented motherfuckers out here in Seattle. Like it will be dope if we put something together, like just get all my friends mm. or people that are around and mm-hmm. like make something happen. And I had written this all down, like, and typed it out, and I was talking to, you know, mentors and whatnot, and I did the, um, uh, this thing where, like, my dad told me, it was, like, where you mail what you've written back to yourself. It's like, I forgot what he called it. Yeah, I've heard of that before. But, you know, yeah, yeah it's, I forgot what it's like, something like a, try to, like, a trademark yeah, kind of I, thing, so yeah. it's like, if someone else came up with the idea, like, uh, you know, uh, you can be like, no, it's here, right here, but gotcha. it's not actually paying for mm, the trademark, I gotcha. forgot what they call it. But, um, but yeah, um. I started there, it had a different name, and, you know, I just really wanted to, you know, uh, do different things like create this group where we're showcasing our art, selling our art, and then, like, also doing things for the community, like giving back, like teaching these young, you know, students, you know, mm-hmm. how to paint, how to, you know, create products, how to be a, your own business owner, um, and giving others, like, you know, a second chance in life, those people that are less fortunate, mm. you know, a second chance in life and, and you know, providing you know like little goodie bags or you know hell one day if i could like you know creating a home for them you know Mm. to rehab or do whatever they need to do yeah um so that was the vision when it first started um but in this whole process everything moves slowly you know the big thing is financials you know having the money to do everything you know yeah um but it started with like uh i was talking with my homegirl that i went to madrona with uh, her name is Bree. Her um, she creates products, uh, teas and candles, mm-hmm. and I would just go to her house in the CD and on 28th and Jackson, and we just chop it up like, and she'll showcase her art and whatnot. I was like, oh, that's the first one. Mm. That's the first member, yeah. like you know. Mm. And we we just kept talking about these different things, and then I forgot what year it was, but like we just we just continued to 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 contact each other and just meet up with each other yeah and i would just do these paintings and then she'll see them so like okay that's dope mm-hmm. and then we just like i'll say december 2017 is when we officially like you know like we're bringing more people inviting more people mm-hmm. into the group mm-hmm. the next person was shack my homie shack and mm-hmm. um you know he's he draws he does photography mm-hmm. and you know we just we just really want to just sit down with other people and just like see if they have the same vision mm-hmm. yeah. they still wanted like this you know career path you know go down this way you know you know get to the point where we're not actually working a nine to five we're not working artists we are yeah. working on our art and mm-hmm. we're working on a passion you mm-hmm. know so all, all of us in the group are working artists like because yeah. we got to pay our bills you know yeah, yeah, yeah for sure but yeah. um you know we're just you know slowly but surely we're just getting people on board and we just kept inviting people over yeah you know every friday we meet you know 
Um, and I get excited for it, yeah. you know, just to see, like, my brothers and sisters, you yeah. know, sitting there just talking creatively. Either now is at the point where we're talking about shows, the show that we had previously or the show that we're upcoming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before, it was like we were just sitting and talking and just creating art. Mm. You know, we'll you know, just have fun, bring some drinks, bring some food, and then we'll just create art for, like, three hours or something That's like dumb. that. That's dope. No, and it was chill. Yeah, it and it was chill. Yeah. So, and then our first show was like December fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. You know, and we we've, we've accomplished a lot. Like yeah. from December, it was basically like the you know in one year. Like mm-hmm. we're still in two thousand nineteen, yeah, and we've yeah. accomplished so much. Yeah. Like you know, because we've been building up this team. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like have you ever seen Biker Boys? You yeah. know how it, like yep. they first start, yeah. and then like just more people just come up. Hey man, we want to join your crew. Yeah, you know yeah, they yeah, we see yeah, the vision, yeah, yeah. and then it's just like oh shit, like let's get it, let's get it. <laughs> That's dope you know? though. That's dope. Yeah. I think um, yeah, I mean teamwork is is everything, right? Oh, yeah, because like, you can't do everything like on our cars and have in my pocket. But it's uh, the African proverb is like if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go uh, go together. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. it's, that's the that's our vision that we see is like yo like. We could all like bounce out and just like do it alone. Yeah. You know, but I, I see a vision like, yo, we all need each other walk yeah. arm in arm yeah. to go pursue what we want to do. If we yeah. want to, you know, do this for the rest of our lives without yeah. working for somebody else, this is what we don't have to do. Like, yeah. you know, and everything like the whole process and setup for a showcase takes a lot. Yeah. You know, a lot. Like, can you, can you break that down? Because and the reason I ask is because, um, Again, for those who may be listening or watching who are mm-hmm. artists themselves. Yeah, yeah. Lone artists, if you want to say that. Like, they don't have a fundamental family. They don't have yeah. a collective. Mm-hmm. Um, what is some advice you got for them if, if if they want to put on shows? Yeah. If they got stacks of art just sitting in their house and they're like, yo, I want to find a way to display this and put together an event. Yeah. You got advice for them to take that first step or, like, how they can get a, go about doing that? So, they got, I, I feel like they got two things. If they want to just showcase their art by themselves, they can just go to a gallery and just talk to the creator, okay. curator that's there. Okay. And they can, you know, the curator can be like, you know, talk to them like, hey, this art works or this art doesn't, mm-hmm. you know? And they can go from there. And then that curator mainly creates everything for them. Got you. You know? But if you want to do your own show, mm. you need a, you need you need a lot of people to gotcha. help you, you know, go search for the venue. Yeah. That's the first place, the yeah. first thing. Then you got to create flyers for the mm-hmm. for the event. Yeah. You got to think about like whether you want it to be 21 plus or not. And that's huge because the whole licensing thing, you know, if you want to sell alcohol or not. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, if you're going to have food there, if you're going to have other vendors there. Yeah. You know, now we're getting to the point where we're having like we're having featured vendors there, like yeah. other vendors, you know, because we want other people to come and, and bring their networks yeah. there and, 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 and sell art and showcase it to them as well. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a whole process, you know, that takes, you know, yeah. not just yourself. Cause if it was just on you yeah. and you have to create art, yeah. so you're going to, you're going to be stressed yeah. out, yeah. stressed the fuck out. You just got to yeah. keep it real with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Real. You do, you, you know, <laughs> you need someone that's going to be your financial planner, you know, and Bree does that. Bree's like the event financial uh, manager planner and she, you know, creates this accounting sheet and I'm just like, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm glad we got her. We need runners. Yeah. Just, you know, like our our first show at Coyote Central, we needed someone to go run and then get all the uh, the wine because we ran out. Mm. So you need someone to go run out uh, yeah. to get the wine because if, if it's not, if you caught it on yourself and you're supposed to be at the show, yeah. yep. you're going to be like, oh, yeah. shit. You know, yeah. you're going to be stressed out. Like, yeah. So you need people. So, like, yeah. we got my guy Jay, Jay's uh, gallery. Um, that's his IG handle. He, you know, he creates, you know, uh, uh, paintings and whatnot. And actually, me and him are collabing on this one. So he does okay. the background, uh, and I did the foreground. That's dope. You know, so that's, dope. that's what's cool about you know being in a group as well. You start collabing, you can. I didn't know painters know. collab like that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like yeah, it's almost like too. a song. Yeah. It's, it's, like rap, it's like rappers. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a rapper song. Yeah, it's a feature. It's like feature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of dope in that way. I, I, my goal is to is to is to collab with everybody in gotcha. the family gotcha. for real. Yeah, like, y'all. I told y'all I like the Wu Tang. <laughs> yeah, y'all like no, the Wu Tang Clan. For, hey, for we all gonna make money collectively. Hell yeah! But you all do your own thing individually. That's Get what your I'm own saying. bread. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You. you gotta be so, individuals. Yeah. while being collective. Yeah. Facts. So, um, how, how does like a artist go about like pricing their artwork? Mm, good question. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough because I still struggle with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it just you know based off of like, I think the first thing you do is always go online. We got this, the, the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, you know, you yeah. go online, the internet, you type it out, like, how much does a, a painter make? 
you know, or, or, or artist or, you know, photographer, you mm-hmm. know, make. And then you go from there. You know, you also got to be honest with yourself, mm. what you want to sell it for. If it's something that you really enjoy and really like, you, you might want to raise that up. If it's something that you can let go, you know, you can mm. yeah. just mm-hmm. put a little price on it and yeah. hopefully someone gets it. Like, But the way I started, got you. I did it for free to get that to build that network. Yeah. yeah. I painted paintings for my homies. So like the series like like faces and portraits, I did with just like I took a class at this um Gage Academy of Art cuz I had an internship there as a graphic designer mm-hmm. and they gave, they offered me a free course. And so this is like after I came back from college and whatnot. Yeah. And I started, you know, took this course and I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Never mind. I'm going to start doing portraits. Mm. You know, cuz I wanted cuz like everyone in Seattle didn't know I was into art like that. Mhm. In Maine, like they did, because I was the courses I was taking. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I was again insecure about like my art, because like Erica Badu said, we sent it about this shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And so when I came back, I was like doing these portraits for Vaughn, for KT, mm-hmm. Kid, y'all know them, mm-hmm. and you know I gave it to them. And then they like what it what was beautiful about social media mm. is that they post them. Talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So when they media. see that, yeah. they're like, oh, okay. And then people are like, oh, I want to paint it. I want to paint yeah. it. I'm, now I'm at the point where I got so many commissions. I'm like, shit. And I got to work. And yeah. I'm just like, damn. Yeah. It's time to go, you know, full it's a, time. It's, it's a good problem mm-hmm. to have. Though, it's a good, it's a great yeah, problem great to have. One. It's yeah. like, because people want your art. But yeah. like for me right now, it's just tough because I am a working artist, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I like yeah. working nine to five and I try to go home and do my thing. And it's like, I want to do my, you know, my vision of art. But I also got commissions coming in. Like, people want me to do things for them. And I want to do them, but it's just tough to get to them right yeah. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think artists need to kind of, like, come more to the future in terms of, like, how they go about um, really hustling, you know? Like, social media, in my opinion, is... It's a great platform. Like, we, like our generation needs to stop bullshitting, bro. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we're, we're privileged, bro, to have these tools that we currently have. Yeah. Because right? there was a point when it was like... If you want to get your artwork out, like, the only way someone's going to see it is if they see it in person. Right. You have the ability now to cast it to who knows. Right. You don't even know who's watching, right? Right. So um, I ask that because I think sometimes uh, some industries can be very, like, archaic and they could just stay in their traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, do you see a lot more artists now using social media and going going ham with that? Oh, definitely. Okay. Um, I would say that our parents, you know, our, our parents' generation, they sacrificed. Mm. For us to be our own bosses. Mm. Like, my mom's worked at UW for like 30 years. She's just about to get retired. Mm. And it's just like how social media has, you know, grown. It's like that is our marketing platform. You yeah, can do yeah, anything that you wanted to do. You can anything. Any, Put it on social it, yeah. media or YouTube and people watch it and you get reviews. Exposure. You get likes. It's exposure. Exposure. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it's a form of networking and marketing, advertising. Yeah. You know, and all you have to do is just post it. Yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. you don't even got to say anything. Just post yeah. it and just like. <laughs> For real. And people will look. Yeah. yeah. You know, the IG story is really great, too. And it's not, it's not, as, not as, like, nerve-wracking when, you know, like, if you're trying to show someone your art in person, it's different right. than if you're just posting it and you're like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, because if someone's face-to-face, you're like, yo, and you pull the curtain back and, like, mm-hmm. you're watching their facial expression mm-hmm. or reaction, like, yeah. It could but be, I like that, though. Yeah, you like it's that almost more? like it's almost like you going to a job. Yeah. I'd rather go to a job and you see me in person, know yeah. my like character and yeah. personality than me just, you know, be on online and be like, okay, yeah, exactly. let me buy this job or yeah. something like that. It's easier to start. Yeah. It's easier to start nowadays. You, that's but, a connection yeah. right there. Yeah. If you're talking to a person, you mm-hmm. know, like and you're explaining your 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 vision and your your personal your personal uh, uh thing that you've done yeah. you know to the paintings yeah they start to you know like you said before they start to like accept it more and like mm. oh appreciate yeah. it more that's yeah. the word. It, 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 it humanizes the art right a little more right so that's i right. like yeah. getting in front of people and, and talking about my art you know okay. and explaining my vision and, and what i was doing with that's it. important yeah, yeah. very, Got very to, important. Nah, i mean i mean yeah i feel you because like if yeah. i was to see that i'd be like oh yeah i could have a conversation about Jays with this guy, right. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Right, because like, everybody yeah. likes so many different yeah. things, you Hell know. Yeah. And this in Seattle, there's a huge like shoe, like sneakerhead yeah. population. Like I love sneakers too, you know. Yeah. So that's one reason why I did the series. Like everything I do is about like things I like and don't like. Got gotcha. you, you know. And it's just on my journey. I'm just showing you what yeah. is on my journey. And like, every, not everybody, not everybody can even explain their creative process or right. inspiration sometimes yeah, too. Some people I, ran are, it, I ran it yeah. the painters are like i don't know what the hell i was thinking when i did this like right. <laughs> like you know right it just came out i'm like yeah. oh shit all right well i'm gonna just make up my own interpretation right you know and that's good too yeah. and that's good too because i definitely have pieces where people are like 
what is this? Yeah. And I wasn't thinking this, or but I love it though because yeah. I'm like, no, nah, it was a good guess, but like this was about. And then they're like, oh, I see it now. It's kind of like impressionism, impressionism yeah. paintings. You okay. know, my okay. thing is like, you know, this one is a little bit more detailed, but some of them like I had like I did a food series, and there was a I painted a pizza and I painted a cheesecake, and people were calling it like burgers and pumpkins, and I was like, <laughs> nah, but I like that. Yeah, I like that because I want yeah. them to see it because. You know, this the way that the style is in is like, you know, it's, it's detailed in a way, but yeah. it's also like, you know, in in spots, in yeah. big spots and, and things like that. Not everybody's going to get it. It's abstract. Not way. everybody's yeah. going to get it either. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? And, and that's real. totally fine. You know, they're, yeah. they're titled to their own but opinion. They, but, but exposure, right? Yeah, they're it's paying exposure. Attention to, they're paying yeah. attention to it, which is good. They yeah. could not, they, they, you know, they could definitely be talking about something else. Right. But they're talking about your pain. Right. So, I mean, exactly. that's, a, that's, that's a positive to that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Erm, you brought up the pricing which is a dope conversation mm-hmm. to have about tough, about art. Yeah. So I'm um, curious because when you're creating, mm-hmm. right? So like I, I heard Nipsey say, this is a dope quote. And he was talking about, he was like, uh, his whole goal was like, I never wanted to be a starving artist. Like I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that I can create just from a place of like, you know, artistic expression, mm-hmm. not just to make money. Mm-hmm. So the quote is actually like, the se- he said, the second you start trying to solely make art for money, is a moment God walks out the room Mm -hmm. pretty much. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And so for you, it's like, does that, is that something you struggle with when you're creating? Are you thinking of a price in your head as you're creating it? Or are you just like, I'm going to create this from, from a true pure place. And then we'll, we'll cross that bridge later. Yeah. It's it's the second one. I I paint, you know, when I'm in the head space, I'm just trying to create and and just, you know, make it cause I'm going off of images. That's mm-hmm. my reference. I'm trying to make it look as close as possible to that reference, mm-hmm. even though it's still abstract in a way. But, you know, it's still, it still, like, has that detailed aspect as well. Yeah. You know, but, like, I don't think about the prices, gotcha. you know, until after until, until after the series is done. Yeah. I do usually, like, now I've been doing my uh, my paintings in series, like, four or six paintings, mm-hmm. you know, I have. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to price this one out, price this one out, you know. Yeah. And that's the toughest thing for me. Mm. You know, because I also I want people to purchase them, but I also don't want it because when you get into certain areas, you know, demo, you know, demographics, you got to make sure that like, OK, like this, if I need to sell it here, mm-hmm. you know, or people are just going to walk up and just not walk, walk away. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're not even going to get yeah. a conversation. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, this is out of my tax bracket. Yeah. It's like going into Gucci or, or you know, or yeah. Louis V. Like, I don't even go walk. I don't even go in that store because yeah. I know I can't afford it <laughs> yeah. at all. You know, Um but you want to, you know, depending on where you're located and like the people that are coming in the room, yeah. you want to make it like, OK, they can, uh, you know, they can at least afford it or attempt yeah. it. You know, some people don't put price marks on there. And that also makes it kind of like that what, people what can't this? afford it. Yeah. It's a mystery, yeah. you know. So you I would say to painters, put your price on there so people can know like what you're you're selling for. So they yeah. can buy, like, OK, one day I can afford his yeah, painting or yeah. I can buy it right now. I, that's a cra- like, I feel like paintings are the hardest thing to price because mm-hmm. you're like it's I like so, yeah because like we're all looking at something different at the mm-hmm. end of the day like we can yeah. all us right. three can look at this and see three different yeah, things you guys can exactly. have totally different price Exa- points. you see what i'm saying so exactly i think the i think it's really just more so like you, it's really only from the artist's perspective like you mm-hmm. know what you put into it you know right. what it means and you may know what it may mean for the future you know mm-hmm. like culturally or whatever yeah. you know so um, yeah, that's tough. I feel, I feel like that. I feel like that balance is really hard though, cause yeah. like, like you said, the Gucci store thing. Like, what if they're selling everything for like twenty dollars or less, and you never knew? Just never because, knew. Like, you're like, I'm yeah. never going in there. Right. You know. So and it's because like, that real. name. Is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah, you would never know. Like, mm-hmm. somebody just walked up for the first time and was like, man, I can't afford that. They mm-hmm. might never come back. You know. Right. So, no, I feel right. you. That must be tough. No, you know? yeah, pricing is yeah. a tough thing, like with paintings, like but with uh, like products and things like that. Yeah. it's a it's a lot simpler because yeah. you can just like tab- tally up, you know, yeah. everything that you 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 bought to put into it. That's what I'm saying. You, you, know? you there's there's like yeah. obviously expenses that went into creating right. it, but after that, there's like got to be some yeah. sort of value, the sentimental yeah, value. Exactly. Like, so like this one is like my one of my favorites, yeah. you know, for the Jordan series. So I was like, man, I'm gonna yeah. let it go, but yeah. you know, but my thing is like, let me just get it out there, get it on somebody else's wall, mm-hmm. so they can be like, oh, I got a Lester Lester Pearson gotcha. painting up there, you know, rather than you know just trying to like save it and wait for it to you know that one buyer that's gonna put nah, I cause like what I hate is seeing paint painting just collecting dust yeah. in my house yeah. like I haven't even got on to the tip of like doing print copies you know the uh, the prints mm-hmm. like doing a, a printing of that yeah. yeah I'd rather you just have the original 
yeah. put it up on your wall and be yeah. like, yeah, this is the original. Mm-hmm. Like, come this on, is man. Lesser. You know, th- someone that's going to be like, yeah, this is an LCP right yeah. here. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, exactly. The same way they may have been talking about Picasso. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you think Picasso knew? One of my favorites is Basquiat. Okay. You know, and he mm-hmm. died early of an overdose, you know, mm-hmm. and this dude's paintings are like selling for like $110 million. I'm trying to do that now. Like, <laughs> while I'm alive, I want to see that now. Damn. It's going, I, it's a process. So, like, it's, like Basquiat, right? Yeah. I don't Basquiat. know much about the guy, mm-hmm. right? I hear his name all the time. Yeah. Um, outside of painting, what else did he do? That like, because and I'm asking this question because mm-hmm. to say like at that time was he just kind of like only a painter, and to everybody else he's just an average Joe. Nah, and then now he he's he's deemed to be like the great, you know. So I've read like I've read his books, and he's done like he was an actor. Okay. He was an artist, but. He was ex- like for him, like as a painter, he was exceptionally fast, like with his art, like paintings. Like, so the, okay, so you would get his, mm-hmm. like, he would think of an idea and just like run and go do it and then come back. Mm-hmm. But he also linked it with Andy Warhol. Okay. And Andy Warhol was super big, like in the 80s, 90s. Yeah. And that helped skyrocket his career. Yeah. But Basquiat, when he started, like, he, I think he came from a good home. Yeah. And then he just, like, because he was so focused on painting, like, uh, just went homeless yeah. like he just didn't care like where, yeah. where he was at you know but you know he met a lot of art friends like and he yeah. lived in new york yeah. and new york is a great place to you know do yeah. art because new york and la yeah. and so him being in new york like him doing those quick paintings you can show people yeah and then you know that those networks yeah, you know he, he can get funnel them right in yeah into these you know these these galleries you know and his yeah. like he had such a large quantity of paintings and they were huge gotcha like he knew his paint on whatever he could get a hold gotcha. of like the first start yeah. But then he started going to canvas work, you okay. know, but like, I think he was painting on like doors and yeah. stuff like that and, and spray painting. Yeah. Okay. He went by the name Samo. Okay. You know, to start, you okay. know, but yeah, so he was, he was a young rebel. I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm asking that just cause like, I'm hungry. I'm curious, like how do, how do artists build their rep outside of just their art? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, you know, rappers can do things outside of music mm-hmm. that'll make them, you know, like Jay-Z, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. he's a rapper, but then you think about all the other shit he's doing, Yeah, that only makes his name greater when you think about him in the future, you know? Right. So, I'm always curious about, like, I guess from your perspective, like, what are other ways? Like, you guys are doing, you, obviously, you formed your collective. Right. You guys are doing events, right? So, yeah. like, there's things outside of just painting that you can do to build your rep, right? Right. As an artist. So for me, um, I work currently at St. Therese Catholic Academy as the enrichment coordinator, okay. recess, and um, after school care. Um, and I wanted to get in, um, into education after college. And I wasn't even thinking about it because it was a homie that plugged me, my guy Javon, he plugged me with a job mm-hmm. around Mercer, mm-hmm. being a mentor. Um, and I was like, okay. And I, I try to move with purpose. And, and invest my time in everything, you know, and, and, and I was thinking about all the different jobs I was doing. I was like, oh, okay, I got to just stop trying to just make money and try to, like, make an impact. Mm-hmm. And so he told me about this job and mentoring, but I was nervous as hell because working with students, you you, <laughs> you being in front of them, you make a, a, You're a big impact. Yeah. You're, You're impressionable. Yeah. And so, but I, you know, I went for it, and I ended up loving it. You know, and and I saw basically what I wanted to do is because I saw how like public schools in Seattle were way different from a private school in Maine, you know, and I was like, maybe I could take my experiences from over here and transition them to these students over here mm-hmm. and let them know, like, what's going on over there. Gotcha. You know, um, just even with sports, like these kids are playing lacrosse, hockey. We don't have that. We don't got an ice rink. We don't have, you know, yeah, we don't yeah. get that kind of weather over I there. I mean, you know, they, you know, the stigma of black right. people don't like the cold and shit. Right, you know and, that, and that's true, too. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of them don't have those painting yeah. courses or, that, like, yeah. you know, teaching. So, um, But just being a mentor, I didn't get to, like, teach them as much. But, I, you know, I got to just be, you know, a big brother to them and get to know their struggles mm. and, and, and combine with my struggles and give them what I've been through, you know, and just yeah. teach them how to, like, you know, and uh, – um, how to uh, not be afraid of success. Yeah. You know, and because, you know, they come from single parent homes. Yeah. You know, being been, been abused, been doing things that they yeah. shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know, so just being there, just trying to build that trust with them. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. You got to keep it trust. real. Yeah, yeah. building yeah. that trust with them, you know. Yeah. Because uh, there's been so many people that walked out of their lives, you yeah. know. So being there for two years really, like, gauge. I was like, okay, cool. This is, I like this. Yeah. But then I wanted to go over that hump. I wanted to to try teaching and I did that and I, and I got the opportunity at St. Therese. So I went over to the private school um, and I, and I tried it for the first year and I was like, 
teach in school. It's not for me. Okay. And that's one thing that you got to know about yourself. It's like, yeah. what do you not like? There you go. And don't force it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, got to be real with yourself. Be honest. And I was like, okay, I en- I enjoyed what I what I have done, you know, but what was hard for me is to work with students who did not want to be there. Mm. You know, because, like, if I was to go back to teaching, I want all the students, like, maybe maybe to order a course to, to, to be there, but, like, you know, I signed up for this course. I paid for this course kind yeah, of thing, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, because they want to be there. Exactly. There would be, like, I was working from with preschool to eighth grade, so yeah. a wide range of teaching, like, PE and art. And a lot of kids <laughs> would be like, I have to be here because my teacher needs to go on break. Mm. You know, art and PE is still seen as, like, you know, just to push over courses, you know. Yeah. And so – for the teachers, it was just a break time. Yeah. But for me, I'm just like, I'm getting their ki- their students, and they just want to either run and play, yeah. you know, and, and don't have that structure, or they get to the art class and just don't want to do anything. Yeah. Oh, I can't draw, I can't do this. And it's just like, for me, all I want to see you do is just give the effort. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. It's like, even if you're not good at it, you feel that you're not good at it, just give your effort, your best effort. Yeah. That's all I, I ask. I feel that. I feel and that. A lot of them would just quit and just did not want to do it. So, like, for me, it broke my heart. Because, you know, I was there and and I'm still like an artist. And so, yeah. like, I didn't want to, you know, keep putting that energy out there. And then, yeah. like, coming home, I'm like, damn, I don't even want to paint no more. Yeah. I had a bad uh, day. You don't want to be around that. You know, and yeah, I, you got to protect, you gotta protect, your, protect your own energy. Yeah, yeah that's real. Sure. That's real. No, and plus, <laughs> I like what you said. Like, if, if you know it's not for you, just don't do it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you can fuck up and, and, and yeah. it can make matters worse. The way I say it you is, like, saying? the same conviction you have to start something. If you know it's not for you, you gotta have the same conviction to stop doing it. Right. That's like me with rapping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all let him rap? Nah, man. I used to. I, used to, I, was, I really <laughs> thought. <laughs> I'm playing with you, bro. Nah, man. I'll still be spitting though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but like, it's, I'm just using it as an example. Like, you know, like you just gotta know when it's like that's not it. Yeah. You know? So for sure, yeah, I feel you. That's dope. So, um, going back to the uh, the fundamental family, because mm-hmm. um, I I know you did mention there's photographers and all mm-hmm. that. So. Um, well, I guess what are some of like the different art forms within the within, within the, the group family? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have um, me. I'm a, a painter. I yeah. also do the graphic designs um, for the flyers. Mm. Um, we have Bree. She does the products. Uh, she does pro- her own products. It's called her, um, her own business called Be Yourself, Honey. Mm. Um, she does homemade teas, homemade candles, and she does some t- dope tie dye shirts. Okay. Um, we got Jay. Jalen Calhoun, he does uh, his IG is Jay's Gallery, and like I said, he does the uh, you know the poor paints yeah. the backgrounds, mm-hmm. super dope. Uh, we got emotion is the weakness. My brother Brian, he uh, he's an MC, he's a poet, mm-hmm. he's a he's a rapper, singer. Mm-hmm. You know, good into the transition to that now. Mm-hmm. We got uh, uh, my guy Solo. His IG is Lucky Lefty, um, and he does his drawing. He's on his iPad and whatnot. Uh, we got my brother Tomas, and he's more on the business side, you know, doing his thing, um, just coming in with helping us with the accounting and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, cause we're getting to that level now where we need somebody to help out with the, you know, the money and the informational yeah. table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Who else? Jay, Jalen, uh, Jalen Hill. He's a photographer. Um, and man, the lighting that he does on there is crazy. So crazy. So mm-hmm. he's doing digital photography Dope. and he does like a lot of portraits. I would say mm-hmm. the majority of his mediums, um, we got Ashley, piece by piece. That's her IG handle. Um, and she does portraits as well, some dope portraits and, and different and different like uh, uh, images as well. Like, and it's really cool. Um, who else? Uh, Shaq. Um, and he does his drawing. I mentioned mm-hmm. he does drawings and whatnot in photography. We got uh, Jess. She just moved. She moved to Dallas, Texas, but she's also a painter as yeah, well. Yeah, y'all deep, man. Yeah, so <laughs> real, bro. We 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 pretty we pretty big, and you yeah, know, that's it, dope. because of like you know people's schedules, we drop and we come in, but we, you know yeah. we still hold them like, hey, yeah, you're yeah. still family. Stevie, yeah, yeah. my guy Stevie, he he does products as well. Mm-hmm. Um, What's up, can I join, bro? Identity, man, come through <laughs> every Friday. We meet, man, come through. Like <laughs> oh, we need on, as, as, yeah. as many people, you know, to to yeah. to share this vision. I, I, so actually, yeah, I guess. For those, hope I, I'm hope I'm not met, uh, forgetting nobody. I yeah, hope not. Yeah, because there's a lot of us. <laughs> the collect the, the, the fundamental, fundamental family. family man. Yeah. yeah. Um. Bro. So for people who who may want to reach out, mm-hmm. you know, maybe sit in on a meeting, maybe just yeah. connect with y'all. 
Um, where can they find you on social media? Find me. Okay. I'm at uh or, have, or fundamental. Do you guys have social media yeah. as well? Yeah. So I'm less is less underscore is underscore oh eight. Okay. Or or less underscore is underscore more oh eight. Sorry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um for fundamental is fundamental uh, fun dot d dot a dot mental. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Bro- brother Brian created it, so I was yeah. like, okay. Um and the uh, email is fundamental the group okay. at gmail dot com. And I think it's just fundamental on Facebook because okay. we couldn't do all the like parentheses and, yeah, yeah, yeah. For and, sure, and for dots and for stuff sure. like that. Um, so yeah, that's where you can reach us and okay. find and find us. Uh, you know, definitely hit us up on I, uh, IG. You okay. know, we you know we want to keep networking and, and and getting more venue space and just getting out there. We're um, we've uh, we want to do more community markets. Yeah. We did one in the summer. So shout out to my brother Sammy yeah. over on uh, 28th and Jackson. Yeah. Go to his deli hey, market. Sammy, you know Sammy. Yeah, that's, that's my, my guy. guy. Yeah. We went to Franklin together, bro. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah. So uh, definitely go out there, man. Um, and, and it's like a deli grocery. Go get your uh, products over there, you yeah, know. Um, and we had a community market there, a uh, farmer's market there uh, oh, yeah. in this parking lot. It was a good turnout. Yeah, you want to yeah, yeah. do it, it per, weather permitting, you know. We yeah. got to do it in the summer because yeah, it's yeah, be cold sure. around mm-hmm. here. So we were hopefully do another one in the summer. We did a car wash there as well. Hell yeah. Um, and, yeah, yeah, definitely hit us up because okay. we would love to connect and meet more artists, yeah. new artists, you know, and, and keep growing the group, yes. you know, for, for what it is and, and just keep on with this vision. Mm. You know, our vision is to really just not work for anyone else but ourselves. For yeah. real. Like, no, that's dope, That's bro. what it's all about. That's what our parents sacrificed yeah. for, for. I real. love it, man. I love it. So yeah, for all yeah. you artists out there, make sure you reach out. Yeah. yeah. Don't, say, wait, don't say he didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody, somebody could just take a picture and you'd be like, man, let me paint that. And then like mm-hmm. one of the rappers would be like, bro, I need you to do my artwork for my album. Or yeah. Whatever. Like, yeah, that's, just, yeah. that's dope. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's real. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done it yet, but it'll be, it'll be yeah. dope. But yeah, you know, just hypothetically speaking. Now, obviously, you're probably familiar. I always ask this question to all our guests. It's kind of cap things off. Something to kind of sum up what we just discussed but also cast what's ahead for you and yeah. the team as well um so if you can my brother what's one word to describe what keeps you on the up and up <laughs> i feel like you already know i feel like you already know because we talk a lot i don't know if they know let them know <laughs> it's execute man execute right. everything you do mm. like execute just plan execute that shit mm. yeah. you know because i feel like a, like we're so busy in our days and our work days and our, our weekends and we're not and sometimes you can just slip through our fingers mm. but it's like yeah, yeah. even if it's that text or email <clears throat> just write that shit yeah. get it yeah. done that counts you know that definitely and, counts bro right that's and like then, a free throw you know what I mean? right <laughs> just write that shit let it go you know and um you know meet up with the people that you need to meet up with mm. have those meetings mm. you know um, like Nick Cannon said, I saw something. He's like, have meetings. White people have meetings. You Black people need to do it too. <laughs> have meetings. So that's how you get the shit done, you know, yeah. and plan and be there, you know, around each other, mm. planning those things, you mm. know. That's real. Um, that's real. Making sure, you know, you, you can, uh, some people are going to like some things, some people are not going to like some things, you know, but mm. execute for sure. I love that. Yeah. And take care of your mental health. Yeah, really. yeah, I didn't even go. go anything into yeah. detail about that. Yeah, maybe for the next show, but yeah, like, yeah, nah. mental health is important. It I went is. through a bipolar disorder, so yeah, I can definitely mm-hmm. talk to you guys more about yeah. that next next time. Yeah, yeah. it's important. Bi- it's so important. important. It's, important. it's important. so important. Sure. It, I took an L, but came back. Yeah, better. yeah. So I think just humble myself. I think first yeah. acknowledging it's important Facts. is a start, and then kind of like learning accepting more about it, it. Yeah. accepting it that you you know that you're going through it because a lot of people, especially in the black community, don't. It's like. You know, especially like our parents' generation, like, oh, uh, yeah, shit, nothing wrong yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah. You know? I just think, I think when it comes to mental health, you need to understand you can't generalize it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, everybody has their own unique experience with what that is. Right. So, you got to explore that for yourself Facts. individually, right? You can't, I can't hear you say that and be like, okay, well, then if he's going through it, then I'm going through it. It's like, nah, you guys mm. are probably going through two different things. Right. So definitely. Right. Yeah, that's important. It's a good, good, good call out. For, for sure. sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Execute, man. I like that. That's the first time we got executed. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Time, yeah. <laughs> I've been watching y'all shows. I'm like, good. You know what I said? It? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got it, bro. You Fast. got it. You got cool. it, Mr. Execute. All right, man. Uh, well, Les, man, again, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for, you know, the work you're doing, you and your team as well as the Fundamental Family. Um, yeah, man. Anything else, Irv? Good? Hey, nah, Saturday, November 9th, oh, yeah. Fundamentals having a showcase. Okay. It's the Flavors of Fall show. Okay. Tickets are $10, but come with two drink tickets. Mm. You know, so we're providing drinks for y'all. Yeah. Uh, oh, tickets yeah. at the doors. It takes two drinks, yeah. man. 15, you know, just come yeah. and uh, view, some, view some art. 
see some uh, artists. Oh, and I forgot my boy Cal. Cal's a part of the group, 40 Cal. Yeah, so shout out Cal. So ho- holla at him. Like, I knew I was forgetting somebody. Yeah. My bad, bro. Yeah. Love you, man. You didn't forget him. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. November 9th. November 9th. Yep. Okay, cool. We'll make sure people know about that as well. Uh, but yeah, man, Les, the Fundamental Family, thank you. And I think it's safe to say that you guys are all officially members of the Up and Up. Can we get a round of applause? My brother. Appreciate the both of y'all, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For sure, man. Thank you so much.